Uh, so Neil, lower back pain is a big problem many cyclists get. It's been a common question on the channel so far. So mm. why does it happen? It's a good question, mate. Um, there's two causes. One is the rider being insufficiently fit and strong to ride the bike for the duration that they're doing. If they're going up massive hills, their core strength is rubbish. That's by far the least likely problem. The, the most likely solution is that there's a positional problem. Right. And so I'll try and go over the, the causation, the basic causation behind how, the, how back pain generally occurs. And mm -hmm. there's lots of caveats to this one. There's lots of oddball things which can cause back pain, but this is, this is the main stuff, which is muscular overload. The vast majority of back pain, on, lower back pain on a bike is caused by muscular fatigue. Certain muscle groups getting, getting flogged, trying to stabilize the rider, trying to stop them sitting twisted, this type of thing. Trying to adapt around a bad position, in other words. The muscles that um, tend to get overloaded, uh, and we'll try and find you a little anatomical image of this, is the, the particular one that tends to cause most trouble, is, I guess there's two. There's the quadratus lumborum, which is one of the sort of stabilizers which comes down from your lower part of your ribs and attaches onto the top arches of the pelvis, and it's a lateral stabilizer of the pelvis. So if your pelvis is moving a lot, this muscle is trying to stabilize it, it can get overloaded. And the second one is the glutes. When, the, when, when one or both of your glute meds or your glute max is, is absolutely locked up, working super hard, it will give you pain which feels like it's in your back a lot of the time. That one will be more inclined to radiate down the back of your hamstring, maybe into the lower leg, almost like a sciatica type presentation. So that, that's one way you might be able to differentiate between you know, which one's actually causing the trouble. We'll talk first about one-sided lower back pains. One-sided back pains, I, I would say that maybe this is probably a 50-50, so half the people with lower back pain will have one-sided and half of them will have dual-sided lower back pain. The one-sided ones are caused by, they're all caused by the same thing, which is asymmetry in the rider's technique. So let's say you've got a shorter left leg and you're dropping your left hip forward and your, your right your right side is, is having its plane of motion challenged because the knee is chopping outside the line of the pedal. Your glute is trying to stabilize the leg to keep the knee above the pedal. Your glute gets overloaded, you get right-sided lower back pain. So the problem would be a symmetry issue in the rider in this case. Essentially, when the pelvis is oblique to the bike or it's dropping dramatically on one side or the other side for whatever reason, whatever positional reason that is, the rider will be more inclined to get one-sided back pain. So if you're getting one-sided pain, you must look for the cause of the asymmetry, whether it's a leg length difference, the seat being too high, the cleat position being too far forward, there's a lot of possibilities, you can't go into them all. But a symmetry issue is a bit harder for the rider to fix. Um, so, you know, consult a good bike fitting professional or do a bit of sleuthing on your own if you've been through multiple fits and you've had no luck and you think you might have a shorter right leg, try some shims under your right foot first. You can always take them back out if it feels worse. So you'll find the muscles are basically getting overloaded. They're developing trigger points. They're generating pain. The rider gets off the bike and their pain diminishes rapidly. Within minutes or hours, it's gone again. That means that it's muscular almost always. Right. If it hangs around for a long time, it may actually be inflammatory. And that's, it could mean that there's actually a structural thing going on around your spine. Let's hope not. When they get really bad, when the glute has been chronically tight for a long time, the rider has been oblique to the bike for a long time, the sacroiliac joint can get involved and it can jam up and get stiff and that's really messy, very difficult to resolve once they're jammed up. Once again, try and find a good bike fitting professional, someone hopefully with some sort of medical background like a physio or, a, or a, you know, an osteopath or a chiropractor who's got some knowledge of how to assess a sacroiliac joint and see if it's moving. They can be an oddball one, which is really hard to figure out. Lower back pain on both sides is almost always caused by rocking on the seat. So this one's a little bit easier. If the rider is going like this a lot, if their pelvis is moving a lot left and right, the instability of the pelvis will tend to overload the QLs, the quadratus lumborum. It tries to stabilize the pelvis to stop it rocking. The tricky question is why is the pelvis rocking? Mm. The pelvis can rock excessively if the Q factor is too narrow. So if you've got a really wide hipped guy, his, his knees are perhaps chopping outside the line of the pedal, his pelvis will rock as in, a, it, you know, it'll drop down on one side in an attempt to help the plane of motion of the knee to, to keep the knee happy. So if the Q factor is dramatically too narrow, you might get rocking, which can actually make your back hurt. So if your feet are too close together, if the seat's too high, you'll, you'll struggle to reach through the bottom of the stroke. Your pelvis will drop down on each pedal stroke, left, right, left, right, to help you through the bottom of the stroke. If the cleat position is too far forward, when you climb a hill, you'll drop your heels and you'll rock 
because the seat height is suddenly too high because you're dropping your heels excessively uh, as the load goes up. Um, so those are the three big ones. If the seat is too high, the Q factor is too narrow, or the cleat position is too far forward, mm. you, you tend to get rocky. Now, if the ride is tremendously strong and stable, they won't rock at all, and they won't get the back pain. But if they're really weak, their core strength is terrible, they're not very stable in a general sense, they're hyper-flexible, they'll rock a lot, and they're more inclined to get the back pain. So if you strengthen your back musculature, you might you might reach a point where you can ride longer and harder before you get it, but the cause is still a positional cause most of the time. Mm. People say, what if, what if the front end is too low? Well, if the drop is really excessive, you can get back pain, but I find that's actually one of the least common causes. Right. Yeah. It, it, most often the rider's torso, if the, the, the front end is way too low, the rider will tip their torso forward enough to, you know, till they reach their limit, and then they'll just start doing this with their shoulders until they can get down there. And they won't tend to excessively flex their spine forward. They'll tend to try and do it with their shoulders mm. most of the time, most of the time. So it's possible that the front end is too low, but more likely it's something in the back end. And so always look for those, those three things, the Q factor, the seat being too high, and in the cleat position being too far forward. And try altering those things and go and give it a test ride, see what stops you back from, from hurting. If you feel like when you're climbing, your heels are dropping a lot and you're starting to get choppy in the pedal stroke and it's feeling rubbish, either lower the seat or move the cleats further back so that you're more stable and less inclined to rock. The other, I guess the, the, the more oddball possibilities, a lack of arch support can sometimes do it. If the rider has got really hyper-flexible feet, flat feet, the arches drop a lot, they can tend to rock because of lack of foot stability. That's less common, but it, it can happen if the cranks are too long. If you've got a person with really bad hip impingement, over the top of the stroke, it'll kind of hitch their hips left and right like mm. this, and you'd get that a bit with, you know, with, with your particular situation where the longer cranks, you might feel generally less comfortable because your pelvis is rocking more because at the top of the stroke, the hip impingement is occurring because of the longer crank, and it's tipping your left and right, and that can also give you lower back pain. So mm. that's one of the oddball possibilities. And, um, you know, crank length, I guess... If you've got really bad hip impingement, it's possible that that's the cause, but it's again, it's one of the less likely causes. Okay. Yeah. But the seed height, the Q factor, and the cleat position would be the big three. Okay. Yeah. Good. Tricky one. Once again, there's uh, a myriad of other possibilities too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's like, you might have uh, a dodgy inflamed disc at L5, which is, you know, getting inflamed. You might have, you might have a genetic malformation in the facet joints in the lower part of your back. You know, there's all these other possibilities for what it could be, but by far the majority of them are muscular overload from instability. Okay. Mm.